Cam strike available. Friendly cam strike incoming. Oh! Soldier, your sentry gun is ready. Good morning, you beautiful people. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day today. Today, I want to talk about my first impressions of what I have seen from Black Ops 3. The beta is released and people are playing it to death. My subscriptions are just booming with Black Ops 3. So I would like to believe that we all kind of have an understanding more or less of what is going to be in the game. And I am, first of all, very happy with the beta and with what I am seeing, with the amount of stuff that they're letting us have, with the amount of weapons and just the freedom we have uh, of the dynamics of Black Ops 3. And it, it shows a sort of confidence in Treyarch to have in their game to release a bunch of this stuff a couple months before they actually release it. This will be kind of a sequel video to my uh, excitement and my worries video, uh, starting with the exciting parts. Um, if you watch my worries video, the main two reasons that I was severely disappointed with Black Ops 2 and the reason I'm trying to hold back from being excited from Black Ops 3, I'm not just some like sour guy who like really wants to hate on the game. I just don't want to be disappointed again. You know, low expectations and I'll be impressed. Uh, with Black Ops 2, I had high expectations, so I'm trying to avoid that. I really, I really do love Call of Duty, and I really do want this to be a good Call of Duty. So please, don't take my negativity uh, to heart. It's just me trying to create realistic expectations. That being said, the two major factors I said that was very disappointing about about Black Ops 2 was the hit detection, the netcode, and footsteps. Now, I had a text from Biebs. Biebs texted me. He was watching Pwn Stars, and he said, Wow, I heard some guy's footsteps from a while away. And I was excited. I was like, Biebs, don't tell me that. Don't get me excited, because you know, when you tell me footsteps are good, I will get excited. So, I kind of set that aside. I was like, you know, maybe he's just crazy. Maybe he's just trying to be too positive about the game. And then I was watching a video by Hutch, and he said, Wow, the connections are so good in this game for the amount of people that are on. You know, it feels super solid. It hasn't felt this solid, I think he said, since Call of Duty 4, which is great. And then he said, man, you can really hear people's footsteps in this game with Amplify or whatever. And I was like, okay, I'm excited. And I couldn't handle it. And I'm very, very upset that I'm excited right now because those are the two main factors that I was looking for in this game. Good, usable footsteps. I don't want overpowered footsteps. Usable footsteps and good connections. Those are the two top most uh, just reasons for me playing the game. You know, I know it seems kind of shallow for footsteps, but it's, it's a dynamic that if you get right, it can be so, so good. And on top of the positivity, we are back to a regular, solid, vanilla Call of Duty. You know, none of this advanced warfare, 350 different types of weapons, no such thing as weapon balance, uh, no more, I know next week they're getting like three extra weapons, like, uh, whatever, I'll be playing the Black Ops 3 beta uh, by that time, and it's just another money grab, and I just, I don't like what advanced warfare turned out to be. It's so great to have one single set of 30 weapons that are appropriately balanced. Now, I know I don't know how the balancing is going to be in this game, but I know Treyarch is really... They were the first ones to actually have a solid post-launch uh, support. You know, good post-launch support was really in, uh, first done well by Treyarch in Black Ops 1. And so I am cautiously optimistic about the balance in this game because there's one set of weapons I'm very excited about that I'm very excited with the weapon leveling up and all the leveling up we get to do with the weapons and the attachments and the oh and the weapon XP it's just that's what I live for that's what I live and breathe for that's why I played Black Ops 2 that's why I played Modern Warfare 3 for so long just grinding out those weapons it was so addicting and I'm very very excited for that to come back that being said there are two main issues that I still have 
with what I'm seeing. The number one issue is specialist. Um, the support kill streaks, man, David Vonderhaar. It's so difficult to do them right. You know, the inventors of support kill streaks, Infinity Ward, couldn't balance them in their second attempt. You know, they did a very, very good job with Call of Duty Ghost. However, just the ballistic vest and the oracles just destroy any sort of fun, balanced kill streaks we had in the support package. You know, the the Odin was super fun. The Night Owl is probably one of my favorite kill streaks in Call of Duty history. It's so genius and i am a firm believer that support kill streaks have a vital role in the life that is call of duty however lethal support kill streaks have no place in call of duty in any form whatsoever the weapons themselves i am seeing in the specialist category while they do take a skill to use it is hard to fight back against it. David Vonderhaar had said he wants people to be able to fight back against kill streaks, and with the kill streak section, I can see the way they've done that with the genius hater kill streak. But with the specialist, if you see a guy, I was watching Pwn Star's stream, and he came across a guy wearing the invulnerability vest. I don't know, it's the one that disintegrates bullets. It's basically like a painkiller or a ballistic vest. And there is nothing he could do. Like, sure, you can shoot him in the head, but that's never been what makes Call of Duty. You know, that's never been... I don't know. Headshots, to me, they're random, and they're kind of... You can't really go for headshots. Uh, I mean, you can. You can. Obviously, you can. But it's not something consistent. That's the word. I don't want to say it's consistent. And Pwn Stars was playing, and he comes around, and he sees, you know, this guy with the uh, painkiller vest on. And he just gets taken out like he puts so many shots into this guy and he had first shot like he won the gunfight it's the sole reason that the enemy killed Pwn Stars is because of this support kill streak and I just know and Beeb said it some idiot is going to kill me when I'm on like a 20 kill streak by you know electrocuting me around the corner or uh, killing me with those spikes from around the corner from 20 feet away while I have a, a chem strike in my pocket he's gonna go 4 and 30 and somehow manage to kill me because of this support kill streak and it's just so I can see it I can see it happening it's going to happen and it's very discouraging and to a lesser extent I am still worried about the kill streaks the UAV is it's overpowered, that's what I'll say, you know, we've had that debate before. Uh, the lightning strike, I don't see how you fight back against it. Uh, I really don't. Um, if it's not as powerful, that's great. If you can see where the lightning strikes are going to come in, kind of like you could with the Predator missile in Mono Warfare 2 and Mono Warfare 3, that's good. I think you can see where the Hellstorm missile is going to come in, so that's perfectly fine. I never had a huge issue with the Hellstorm missile, uh, however, it was a big deal in Black Ops 2 to me because of the fact uh, with score streaks combined with the lightning strike, it's very, very annoying to have those two kill streaks next to each other. Uh, that's what I'm really worried about. That's really what I am. Uh, just fighting him back fighting back against these kill streaks, both assault and support. I really hope they get it down. I really hope we can give proper feedback. Uh, I can't wait to play it. Uh, I do want to address that as well. If Black Ops 3 really is the next super solid Call of Duty, if it is the next best Call of Duty since, you know, my favorite, you know, Ghost or Modern Warfare 3 or Modern Warfare 2 or Black Ops 1, I might prioritize getting a PlayStation just because of the fact of the the stupid agreement that they have, you know. Um, even when it was on Xbox, I was like, this kind of sucks. You know, if I were king, the only people who would get content early would be season pass holders. That's what it was in Modern Warfare 3, and that's huge, you know, that is the biggest deal you can have. I think that's the best deal you can have. You buy the season pass, you invest in them early, and they give you early stuff. They give you early content. I think that's the best way uh, of going about it. You know, you don't look at the marketing stuff with the Xbox or the PlayStation. So if it's not the best Call of Duty 
you know, I don't think it's going to be that bad to wait a, a month on Xbox to get it, you know. So that's where my friends are. That's where Biebs is. Uh, they're on Xbox. I don't think uh, getting a PlayStation just for one single game is going to be a, a big deal or a big priority to me. I do want to play games on the PlayStation 4 like The Last of Us, but that's later down the road. So that's that. Anyway, what are your thoughts on Black Ops 3? What have you seen? What are you excited for? What are you not excited for? Uh, after all of this stuff has been uh, released about it. Thank you guys so much for watching. And until the next absolutely beautiful Call of Duty morning, I'll catch up with you guys later. And as always, have a great day.